Good morning, it's 26th of Feb, it's half past seven here in the morning in Australia uh, video blog. What I'm going to do today is I just want to do, I think the, the big thing for me, I'm talk to, talking to a lot of people, is that people still don't completely recognise or understand the entire space. You know, what is cryptocurrency, what is blockchain, what is bit, even just what is Bitcoin and uh, it can be a bit of a, an exhausting uh, process trying to get people to understand what it's all about. I mean, the easiest way to say it is it's Internet 2. It's, a, it's an upgrade from what we think we know about the Internet. Uh, there's going to be faster platforms and uh, the ability to move information from one place to another is going to be a lot more seamless and faster in, in the future. And there's going to be a variety of different uh, platforms and applications and all sorts of things that uh, we can utilize. Uh, so what I thought I'd do today is I just wanted to cover my top seven niches. So I talk about this in, in business when I'm doing business coaching. If you, if you want to be successful in life uh, from a monetary point of view, I think you need to target a, a niche, something that you can deliver, a service something that you can focus on that's going to, uh, one, you're going to associate yourself with and be passionate about. And I think that's a, a real big uh, catalyst to those who you see that are successful in life, like I said, uh, that they've been able to narrow it down. The thing about niches in regards to cryptocurrencies is that it's very, very diverse. So in regards to understanding what blockchain is about, I talk about niche. So initially we had Bitcoin which came out and it was stereotyped as a currency. You know, it was meant to be uh, an exchange of goods or a, a, a value, a store of value. Um, so far, what we've seen with Bitcoin, it hasn't necessarily been used uh, as a currency or it hasn't been picked up as uh, at mainstream level as a currency, although that's changing them. I and there are ATMs, you can utilize Bitcoin and pull money out and, and move it around. And I admit I have used Bitcoin for different things. I have purchased things with Bitcoin. And, you know, that's going to change. However, the, the main thing behind Bitcoin is that it's actually uh, a blockchain. And that's where the evolution of the space has actually occurred. Not necessarily based on what Bitcoin does. However, we've got lots of uh, new currencies that have come forward who have forked or branched themselves away from Bitcoin and look to improve on the existing infrastructure. So what I wanted to do is just go through, I'm just going to run through the seven niches. Now the first one that I think is going to do really, really well and it's probably going to be uh, more household name type of stuff and that's going to be the platforms. Now the platforms uh, essentially is where all these uh, DAP applications are going to be built on top of and there's there's quite a lot of them out there. We've got EOS, we've got NEO, we've got um, uh, Stratus and there's Waves and there's uh, even Ethereum which has got the most amount of applications on it. I think it's got 475 applications being built on it and the closest one to that is well under five, five or six maybe, eight um, you know, you've got Waves, I know Waves has got a few and, and BitShares and there's, there's quite a few others but um, Ethereum's leading the way but it's only early days in, in this space in regards to uh, how much focus and attention these platforms can get. So there's no doubt EOS and I think EOS and, and NEO are going to be standouts in the sense that they're evolving from the scalability issues that we see with Ethereum and you can look this up, there's, there are already some existing issues. Um, and I think that they can resolve all of these things just with getting the right tech and finding some people who can help them with these issues. But uh, the, the advantages of EOS and, and NEO, what I can see down the track, is there's going to be incentives to actually hold and, and uh, utilise the actual token in various different ways, whether you're an application development team or you're just a... Uh, a fan of the actual platform and you're holding their utility token or their tokens uh, for staking and some some other incentives that they're going to come forward with. Um, so that was the first niche was the DAP application platforms and there's going to be more and there's quite a few out there just lurking in the shadows and uh, even Digibyte. Digibyte's looking to 
to develop uh, applications. Now, a lot of people thought that was a currency at the, at the initial stages, but uh, they've worked really hard to get themselves to a point where it's actually a blockchain and they're looking and seeking to get applications being built on top. Next one is going to be data revenue streams. Now, at the moment, when the internet first came out, we we saw a lot of uh, particular uh, platforms come forward. We've got YouTube, we've got Facebook, um, we've got a lot of these other apps like Instagram on our phone, uh, these type of things. And there's a lot of extracting of information. I don't think we realise how much money that information, our personal data is worth. And we, we've we're actually quite careless with it, I mean, especially people on Facebook have probably put up some, uh, you know, funny pictures and videos of themselves, and they may share information about them, their private life, uh, in the chat boxes, in the messengers, and things like that. We don't realise that certain information is being skimmed. Same with YouTube. There's a lot of information out there. They can. Uh, obviously categorize people into certain categories based on taste, uh, based on uh, passion, based on uh, work, uh, all sorts of different um, elements that make up who we are in our life. And they can put these in there and then they can target advertising dollars or they can sell this data to uh, companies that may want information relevant to their products. So uh, <clears throat> I think take hold of our privacy. We're leaving footprints everywhere. We need to be aware that yeah, that's our information and what I love about blockchain is I think there's going to be some great opportunities to actually take control of our information and instead of YouTube going and selling our information we can actually do that ourselves from an encrypted uh, platform and I think there's quite a lot of these coming out it's still early days it might not be as exciting as some of these other other platforms you know good old data uh, revenue is, is not always the most exciting unless you're creating content or you're, you're actually um, taking part in delivering that, that particular data. But there's going to be a massive swing towards, I believe, integrated platforms that allow you to collate your data and categorize your data and then connect with other manufacturers and uh, companies that want your information and actually leverage that for token rewards. Uh, so I've just opened up a couple of tabs. There's Data Wallet. Um, I actually got uh, invested in this one. Um, I'm not saying you need to go and do any of that type of stuff. I'm just letting you know. It's just um, out of the nature of sharing. Uh, again, it's all about these platforms that are going to allow data exchanging um, in a way that uh, is, puts more control to the to the user or the individual. Um, there's another one called Repux is doing very similar way. They're going to be um, a la or creating a, uh, what do they call it, an exchange for data. Um, they even have a little saying here, you know, data is the new oil. And I think that's very, very true. And I think, we're like again, we've really taken it for granted how valuable our information is. Um, there's another one called Essentia. They're looking at uh, an application. And I think it's already being used in uh, some of the blockchains. Uh, I did read that it was being used by Ethereum and so, some of the others. So that's coming up. You can go and read up on these. Some of it's not necessarily the most exciting uh, applications, but I think when you realise that uh, you, you could actually be responsible for a trillion dollar um, industry and having your part of that would be uh, you know, of interest. Um, another one I came across is Data Broker Deo. Uh, they're also creating a global market for data. Uh, and so it's going to be very interesting. And they're talking about being able to sell the information from the IoT, so Internet of All Things Sensors. I think there's going to be a day in the future where our homes are completely rigged up to the Internet and pretty much everything that we do it could be how many times we actually open the door of the dishwasher, <laughs> you know, and how many times we actually use our appliances or, you know, maybe it could be data or how, how often we spend time in certain rooms of the house. It could be uh, related to our cars, it could be related to our wristwatches, it could be related to anything that we can actually connect to the internet. Uh, we could actually sell that data. Uh, so it's very, very interesting sort of space. Another one I came across, and there's quite a few. It's a very, very competitive market. It's a race, um, is what this one's called, IPSX. 
uh, IP exchange. So they're talking about exchanges and platforms and the ability to collate your information, put it into a hub and then distribute it. Another one I've, I looked at uh, a couple of months ago was HDAC. Uh, they're, looking, they're actually building an apartment building in Korea, I think, and it's all going to be connected to the internet. Uh, again, it's not necessarily about selling the data, uh, but it's about providing... Uh, the opportunity to actually utilize the internet of all things as a concept uh, and then having utility tokens and things um, to leverage incentives and to keep it flowing and to create that attention and uh, connection between the community and the actual infrastructure. Uh, the next uh, niche is currencies. Well, I think this is a bit of a given. I think, well, Bitcoin was the first. Bitcoin was the first currency as such. Um, now, we've been indoctrinated into a system which is uh, supports fiat currency and the banking system, and we're sort of spoiled in the sense that that's what we're used to. We use the cards. It already is digital. If you think about your Visa card or your direct debit card, you go and swipe it, pay, wave it over the sensor. You're already uh, utilising digital cash. Uh, I think that the difference between what we do now and, say, some of these uh, blockchain-based currencies is that they can do more. The tokens can do more. We can, you can connect it to smart contracts and all sorts of different things, and you can leverage information and privacy and encryption uh, a lot better than what we can with the existing infrastructure. So, I, you know, I, I, this one makes me nervous, the whole currency stuff makes me nervous especially if you're putting money into blockchain right now because i think there's this resistance is how, how are the corrupted banking governments around the world going to respond to cryptocurrencies you know do they want to have complete control and it's their currency i can actually the longer this goes on and the bigger i see these companies become i i do get a, a really good feeling about the currencies and I do think that they're going to have a, a major play and I can actually see them uh, holding on and sticking in this space. And we may find that the entire world moves to digital cash and allows these cryptocurrencies as such uh, to come forward and be the one. And if you think about one world governments and things like this, you know, a dash is, is very, it's neutral. It's not country based, it's worldwide. And I think that's what this is about this is part of that vision and that scope so currencies like dash and there's quite a few of them in bitcoin we already know and you've got bitcoin cash and uh, there's even litecoin cash and you've got litecoin some of them i sort of i'm sort of sticking to the the ones that are in the top 20 top 30 um even verge is in the top 30 in regards to currencies and they just keep on going and they keep on uh building on what they've got and apis and i'll, I'll be doing and implementing cryptocurrencies into my businesses. I've got a gym and I do have direct debits and things like that. I'm also building a, a resort, uh, sort of a coaching facility, and I want to have uh, smart tokens and I want to have cryptocurrencies inbuilt and encrypted into into the that infrastructure when it's done. So I'm going to be pl playing my part, I suppose, in securing cryptocurrencies in this space. And I think decentralization is very, very important. I think, uh, and again, it comes back to privacy and those type of things. I, I, I want that. I want to be able to always have the autonomy to to make those decisions. And I think everyone should take shouldn't take that for granted. Um, next one is regards to passive incomes. Um, so this is I'm always looking for ways of increasing my cash flow and incomes where I'm not necessarily having to leverage my own hard work. I mean, you, you, I've, you can only focus on so much in a day. And that's why when you're investing is you need to have a, an understanding of what you're investing in and it's nice to have a return or a dividend. That's why the stock market was there. Any of the stocks that you invest in that had a dividend were, were pretty much not a bad decision. Um, however, the stock market, I think the existing... Uh, financial markets are under a lot of stress so it hasn't been as easy to find um, a residual return in in many ways and I think you'll find that uh, blockchain and uh, utility tokens and these particular types of platforms are going to present 
greater returns or possible returns. Just remember, it was still early days. It's very risky uh, to get involved in these because they haven't got the legs yet. They don't haven't got 10 years of history behind them. Um, so you know, there's always an element of risk if you're getting into these particular platforms early. But I'm, but I am looking at them. There's Populous, there's PayPal, there's Spectre that I know has already announced their first two hundred and fifty thousand dollar dividend. Uh, that's going to be made available to token holders in I think it's the first of April. You know, so so the, it's happening. I think there's T A A S Tars. Uh, I'm not in it, but some of the guys that are in my Crypto Nuts Telegram group have been talking about. Uh, the returns that they've been getting from that and I think that's a pretty much a, a platform where you leverage your existing cryptocurrency portfolio I don't know the complete ins and outs then there's obviously the, the coins at stake uh, you know the ones that um, actually have a little bit of a return like NEO you get gas um, I'm staking things like Redcoin and Bitbean I mean that's that's just on the side and a bit of a bit of a giggle at the moment um, in the sense that you know they've still got a long way to go to prove themselves um, and they may never and that's the thing but at the, you know any little bits of money that are coming in is probably a good thing I do a fair bit of curating on Golos and Steemit um, and I, like I said NEO and EOS when EOS launches they're looking at having a, a proof of stake and there will be other incentives to actually utilize the token in various ways so that's what I'm sort of looking at is how can I generate a little bit more money on the side uh, while I'm doing all my hard work on the things that I'm passionate about during the day? Uh, because I think any of that is worth looking into and doing some more research. Next niche was property and vacations. Obviously, the property market's massive. Um, there's no doubt property as a whole is massive. And property is not just residential. I mean, we're looking at, uh, we've got the rental market, uh, we've obviously got homeowners, uh, we've got uh, vacation, we've got uh, commercial, you know, office blocks, warehousing, uh, those type of things. Uh, there might be even part-time, uh, timeshare type of uh, scenarios. So there's, it's, it's a massive, anything with bricks and mortar is, you know, potential, well, it's actually an asset, it's a very solid asset, uh, whether or not you've got these particular uh, assets to leverage. Some people have got uh, particular assets and not necessarily generating the rent that they want. I know there's, I was talking to a guy in my crypto nuts who's got a couple of properties, I think he's in Poland or something, or Germany, and he's got a couple of properties that have been vacant for an extended period of time. Uh, it's been quite hard to get people into them. And it could come down to location, could come down to the fine financial circumstances of the jurisdiction you're in. I mean, there's so much of it. But I think blockchain is going to definitely provide some greater opportunities for people with these particular assets, uh, you know, creating a, a utility token or a smart token and encouraging people to utilise these tokens to uh, uh, get involved in vacation rentals um, across the world and actually utilise these assets and get more traffic and more energy going through the property market is pretty much what it's about. And that's very, very interesting to me. I found this one, Crypto Nut BNB. Did a video on it the other day. I just did a quick Google. I found another one called Crypto Properties. Just remember, I don't, I haven't done any background check on any of these. I don't know if they're 100% secure. We we're very, very early days in this particular blockchain. So please show your due diligence. I'm just pulling these up to show you that they exist. Um, here's another one, Decentralized Home Rental Platform. Uh, rent bearing, which I did uh, see got a bit of a mention in one of the, I think it was uh, Coin Telegraph. Um, so yeah, rentals. I think property and vacation industry market is going to do really, really well. Uh, number six is smart tokens. I think smart tokens as a whole is going to be either hit or it's going to be a miss. Uh, I think people who have got big communities may do really well with smart tokens uh, if you've got an existing uh, like I said fan base or something like that or you've got a website which has got history and it's got quite a lot of traffic it may do well to have a smart media token I think it comes down to the products and services that you're also offering I think smart media tokens can also or just smart tokens can also be uh, when it comes down to look, you look at it as a utility token there's going to be a lot of uh, applications 
where they're going to encourage attention and try to get people engaging with the brands and the products a little bit more and that's where smart tokens are going to come in i think they're going to connect uh, social media with brands and make it a little bit more personalized at the moment you think about retail it's all about you have to go in through the front doors for for the interaction to occur apart from maybe some tv advertising radio advertising we've seen social media increase and leverage the ability to get uh, the brands and and the uh, consumer connecting with these companies um, and that's increasing and I think blockchain is going to increase that uh, capacity um, and I was looking at another <clears throat> one here this is called momentum revolutionizing marketing and loyalty and again it's about a token tokenized incentives um, and you get rewarded for your attention you get rewarded for your focus and your loyalty same with uh, Spring. I mean this is retail we're talking about here Spring is also going to reward you for interacting with the brand. So scanning barcodes, leaving reviews. Uh, there's no doubt that the uh, particular brands will be able to leverage and connect with you through the application, uh, through push notices and things like that. So it's going to increase and, like I said, leverage in these particular brands' ability to get to the consumer a little bit more. So smart tokens, media, retail, brand awareness. Um, next one I've got is platforms. I think when I talk about platforms, I'll talk about exchanges, uh, where you actually exchange your cryptocurrencies, uh, exchange your smart tokens uh, for money or for other goods, and it's probably going to be an expanding space. Uh, decentralized is always nice. I mean, I use Binance and Bittrex. You could say that they're centralized. Um, however, I, I haven't really had any bad experiences with that, but I think the, the decentralized options in the future are probably going to allow more opportunities for particular smart tokens and, and coins to come in and uh, be able to shine, whereas a centralized particular entity may not accept that coin. And I know Binance has been charging $100,000 just to get onto the platform, and that's whether you want to call that a bribe or an entry fee or a, I think that's business, you know, and I, that's that's the price you pay. You want to get onto Binance, you have to pay a hundred grand, as far as I know. Um, but the decentralized uh, platforms are definitely going to have their day. EOS Finex, so this is Bitfinex is already looking at migrating as such or creating a secondary decentralized exchange on EOS. And uh, I think Bitfinex has got its own little issues at the moment. There's a bit of um, bad talk behind the scenes in regards to, I think it's Tether and, what, and whatnot. But, you know, time will, time will prove whether or not any of that's actually real or anything, any of that's actually worth uh, listening to. Uh, we'll see. I mean, you've always got to be tread carefully in this crypto space because it's so volatile. Uh, however, EOS has obviously got a very, very solid back end. And I think uh, we're going to see EOS really blossom after the, its um, token distribution period has ended and that's going to be in April, May, June, um, halfway through this year. Uh, what else have I got? Oh, I did actually go to EOS Finex, they got a page, so they, they started, they started to put their representation out on the page, out, out, out there and get uh, some attention. Then there was another one that I've been um, uh, highlighting and that's uh, Streamity, another decentralized cryptocurrency exchange. Very, very interesting space indeed. Um, I, I'm not too sure where that leads. I mean, if you think about these decentralized exchanges, and someone made a really good point the other day, all of a sudden they get diluted, and there's so many of them. So then what happens is liquidity and traffic within these exchanges becomes, like I said, diluted, and you're not quite getting the prices you want. So what I'd like to see is, you know, five, whatever it is, really good decentralized cryptocurrency exchanges uh, that attract all the traffic and you know they just really blossom and everyone can utilize their smart tokens that they can sell whatever they've got um, as long as they're legitimate businesses I do think there should be some background regulatory regulatory checks on some of these uh, entities to make sure that they are genuine and they're not scam coins or misleading the public um, and that's all I wanted to run through is just my seven niches um, and I, there are more. It was just that's that's just what I came up with. I was just thinking about it over the weekend. There's obviously other little sub niches as well. 
some of them are interesting and I think some of them will actually not necessarily turn into mega super giants like an Amazon or an eBay uh, but they'll have their part in this cryptocurrency space so my seven niches were the DAP platforms like EOS and NEO then you've got data revenue streams uh, the power of your own information being able to sell it uh, then you've got the currencies uh, which I think will shine in time uh, passive incomes you know whether you want to call that a niche uh, I, I think it's more of a, an awareness of uh, choice you know choosing what entities are going to benefit you from a financial point of view regardless of the product they're, they're actually presenting but a lot of information is out there and I think a lot of research still needs to be done property and vacations uh, rentals uh, anything bricks and mortar uh, smart tokens as a whole marketing uh, incentives that branding community driven uh, based energy then you've got platforms and exchanges or exchanges, uh, KuCoin, Dex, e EOS, Finex. Uh, Ether Delta is having heaps of issues at the moment, you know, um, it's not the best platform, uh, but it's the start of what I can see um, happening in, in the evolution of this particular space. Um, other niches that I could come up with, um, I did have a couple in my head. Um, I think the social media platforms, you could say like a Steam it. I think will do really well. It doesn't seem to have too much competition at the moment. Um, I'm on there pretty much all the time and I'm getting used to it and I do like it. Uh, but there are others out there. I'd be interested uh, to hear what other people think. What are the key uh, niches that you think will do really well over the next couple of years in cryptocurrency space? What niches do you think you should avoid? You know, um, let me know. Just put it in the comments below on the YouTube and on my Steam it. That's all I've got. Just thought I'd share that. I've got some other videos I'm going to do later today. And uh, thanks for watching, guys.